for the week. I was doing uh, some interviews for Perry there and I bumped into a woman who told me she was writing a book. She's called Charlie, she's from Bidolf, and she said, is there any chance of coming on and talking about it on the radio? I said, what's it about? She says, it's about my son. He was born with half his face missing. He's 11 and is one of two twins, Harry and Oliver. Now, in the first part of the interview, we heard about the shock and the guilt that Charlie felt when Harry was born. She felt like she'd done something wrong, how difficult it had been to come to terms with it, how his brother, Oliver, has struggled with Harry, who is non-verbal, but has had 20 operations, plastic surgery, to kind of rebuild his face. It was like one half of his face was smudged out. Only one eye, one nostril, a short jaw on one side, and only one ear. He's now got an eye. He's now got the features that you'd associate with most little boys, and he's having an ear built for him. He's also got autism. So basically, Charlie went through the mill at the start when 11 years ago when Harry was born led to the breakdown of her marriage and I invited her into the studio to have a chat about it and this is what she told me she told me how she dealt with his condition have a listen I would say the lowest point for me was just not wanting to be here just feeling that I had robbed my children of a future that I'd promised my bump and feeling that I wasn't the mum that my boys deserved and that they needed and that all came from, I believe, un undiagnosed postnatal depression, the shock and everything like that. You know, now I look back and think they were probably quite natural feelings. But at the time, yeah, I just, I felt that they'd maybe be better with their dad. My marriage broke down, so I was a single parent for a while. And I just felt that I'd failed so massively in every respect as a wife, as a mother. And I would be better off not here. What happened with Mark? Did you was it was the way you were kind of push him away, or had, had it was a difficult? I mean, I I'm trying to put myself in his shoes. Must be so difficult for yeah, both of you. Yeah, yeah, but... it was hard for both of us, and we were really we are still both incredibly good friends, and we were a really good parenting team for the boys. But we talked about the practical elements of having the boys. So we talked about the operations. We talked about the logistics and the strategies that we needed to employ for Harry's autism and things like that. But we didn't talk about our feelings. We didn't talk about. Mark was trying to be strong for me you know he didn't want to upset me and I didn't want to appear any worse than I already felt so we just didn't speak and I think we just drifted in that respect to the point where there was no coming back together and I think having a situation like ours can often make or break a couple unfortunately it broke our marriage but I'm very thankful that we've still got a really good friendship but you think if you were armed with some of what you know now we know hindsight's a magnificent thing you would have been better prepared for everything in your life at the time and that's why you decided to write this book yeah absolutely yeah absolutely when my boys were about 18 months old i read an article in a magazine from a lady who'd had a baby with something very similar called treacher collins syndrome it's a similar syndrome um and she just said she felt this overwhelming maternal love and this bonding and protectiveness for the baby and I just thought that was amazing, that was great, but that really hadn't been my experience. My experience was much darker. I was scared, I felt guilty, as I've mentioned. And so I just thought, you know, if that was me and I just had Harry and I was reading this story of this woman feeling amazing, it probably would have made me feel even worse because I couldn't connect with that at all. So I started to write my book um, and I've included Mark's voice in that as well so that it's got a bit of a dad's perspective, just really to be the story that I wanted to read at the beginning that says it's hard at the beginning, it's really tough and it feels very unfair, but it does get better. So from that dark place, where did you start to come out of that and how did you get out of it? A lot of people will be wondering. Yeah, um, talking, I would say, you know, not keeping festering, keeping it inside me. So it was talking to mum, it was having some private counselling sessions and just patience and antidepressants at one point as well, because I did need that crutch to get me through it and, and I am the person that originally I looked as that as a sign of weakness I really didn't want to go antidepressants but at the point where I said to my mum I just don't want to be here anymore and she said and you know do you have a plan for that and I said yes I do and she said we need to get you some help how did the book writing go and could you yeah. ever imagine yourself writing a book um I've always I've always loved writing always enjoyed writing and initially I didn't know whether it would just be something cathartic for me that I would write that I would feel better getting it out there but as I shared it with family and friends and, and people on Facebook who are in similar positions to me, so they've got either autistic children or children with other disabilities, they were saying, sort of, you know, that's incredible, I'd love to read it. And I just thought, yeah, there are people out there that would be interested. And I think if I could help just one or two mums or dads 
in a similar position and it doesn't have to be as severe as ours but if you know there are any parents that have a baby that isn't maybe what they were expecting they might find a bit of hope in my story and that's incredible for me yeah definitely and what is life like now you're in a good place tell me tell me what's happening now yeah really good place now it's all about celebrating celebrating my boys celebrating their achievements and what they accomplish when harry was born the prognosis was really bleak we didn't know what sort of quality of life he'd have and he's just exceeded everybody's expectations and he continually does that so he's now in high school he's at blackfriars in newcastle who are amazing with him and so he, he just astounds me all the time, both of my boys do, in terms of how resilient and how brilliant they are. And I'm incredibly proud of them. And I'm proud of myself. And I never, ever thought I would say that. You know, I, I never thought I would feel proud of who I am now and where I've come from. <laughs> and what do you think, Oliver, of your mum writing a book? I think it's a really good idea because she's sharing what she experienced with other people who are in sort of the same situation. So I told her... Do you want to help people? And she said, yeah, even if, I can, if it, even if I can help one or two people, then that'd be amazing, so... And Harry, is book, book, Mummy's book good or bad? Good. Good, I thought <laughs> answer. so. Good answer. <laughs> it was great to meet them. They came into the studio yesterday and uh, Harry was fascinated by the remote controls in the studio because he loves remote controls. He had a smile that would light up a room, born with only half a face, 20 operations... You heard there, Charlie, his mum's been through the ring, bring through the ringer with it, and uh, come out the other side, and has written a book about her experiences. It's going to be called Our Altered Life, and she's going to self-publish, I think, in around about six months' time. But a lovely family. And it started us thinking, if you were going to write a book, what would it be called? We've heard that uh, producer Matt Lees would be called uh, Walking Tall as well, just like Peter Crouch, because he's six foot five. Um, he decided to come up with the... the uh, book title walking tall i said peter crouch has already has already nabbed that one matt i'm afraid